All right, we got everybody. Yes, sir. Uh, we're gonna bring this meeting back to order. We have got the Mr. Tom Terrell, who would like to uh, give some road by, I mean, uh, gain a road project. Um, okay. Um, sorry to catch I'd be bringing this to you now to kind of um, share brought to you last week for discussion. We're looking for a motion, so I want the reason why I'm up bringing this to you is because I probably have the biggest heartache about this. Um, there is a <coughs> um, mitigation grant from FEMA in the process. Different, has different stages uh, for Gator Road and Joe. At this time, there is uh, not enough right away to complete the project as first <coughs> thought it was going to be completed. Without two pieces of right of ways, the will it significantly changes the project in scope and everything else. And a lot of scope now will be pushed onto the county. And a significant amount of money will be pushed out of the county for its grant. Um, which actually puts a lot of pipe in the road, has been constructed in the road around those properties. Cliff can speak in much more better detail than I can about that. My heartache is, is that it pushes the onus on the county. It's a lot of money from the county's part, possibly more than the grant's worth. I can't say that for sure. Only Karen can. But um, the amount of money that would come out of the for the county, I don't think is a good value for the county. We'll consider, and there's another thing to consider, we've also received as a small project, we've already received money, and it's um, 23,000 of which the county would have to pay back 87.5% to armor those ditches going up to that intersection, rebuild, rebuild and armor them, which would help eliminate the county maintenance part of that if we don't do that money, do that project which was on hold until it decided that this project um, was going to be completed. We will have to return that money to FEMA. It's a small project. Uh, you get to keep the money on a small project if you can complete the scope for less than what it costs. But uh, if you don't do the scope at all, then you have to return the money. Um, so it's my wish and my desire to go ahead and um, with your permission, ask the chair, there's a motion for the chairman to go ahead and we withdraw from this mitigation grant at this time before we incur any more expenses or try and do it without right away, which is that really truly needed to construct a project right. I have a question on that. How long do we have? How much time do we have? February 2nd. To? Yeah, February 2nd. Okay. Yeah, February 2nd. Okay. Yeah, so of the complete phase one. Yes, yeah, so they broke it into two phases, uh, Mr. Chairman. They broke it into uh, permitting and design as phase one, and then construction as phase two. So we've got two extensions so far. Yeah. We've got two extensions from them so far that, and I guess February second is the end of our second extension. And so, you know, what they want is you know evidence that we have right of way a set of uh, construction plans that are final construction plans and a set of uh, permits for the project. And so we have construction plans um, that we've revised a couple of times, but as it stands right now, you could not build my project with the few right-of-ways that we have, si have signed right now. So it's about, uh, it's almost 1,200 feet on the west side of um, Gainer Road that we do not have right-of-way and it's pretty much centered up on the intersection. So for 600 feet south of the intersection of Joe Neal and 640 feet north of the intersection of Joe Neal, uh, on the west side, we don't have any right of way. So if, um, just for example, if we were able to get right of way by the first, would we be able to, would we, would we be able to do something here that was kind of useful? Uh, I mean, I, I think if we could get the right away, it would be it would be great. There, I don't have any, you know. Um, so if we end up with a <coughs> that, to 
turn it back um, if we don't have it right away by the first. Um, I, you know, I, I guess that would work. I mean, the, the other option is if you if you feel like confident, for example, that we're going to get the right of way, then we can request another extension for FEMA. Well, and, and no, the thing is, I, I think I would, might would know by the first. Okay. But I'd like to see if I can get some feedback. Right. I mean, the way it stands right now, I would need to revise my plans to show uh, 2,400 feet of 36 inch pipe right. on the job, which is. I mean, I think the cost of the pipe alone is probably going to put you close to seventy grand, yeah. maybe eighty grand. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't see where unless we get right away by the first. But we have had, you know, community meetings, and we have had the majority of the landowners actually came to the community <coughs> meeting, uh, and there was some division among them when we had the community meeting here. Right. Would it be appropriate to make a motion that uh, <coughs> we would draw from from the uh, From the project, unless we can get the needed right away by February first. Yes, I mean that would be fine if that's what uh, what you guys want to do. That'd be fine. We should be able to get permits. Too. What's that? Will we be able to get permits as well? Well, I'd have to I'd have to revise the plans. Uh, if I don't have to revise the plans, we're good. If I have to revise the plans and we're going to change the plans, I'm not good. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't want to put any additional money into. So no, but I just think we've got some figures out with some property owners and we're supposed to get in the list. Okay. How many property owners are we I think it's four. Uh -oh. we're, we're, we're making other avenues okay. to, to approach the property owners. Okay. This. I've, I've left a bunch of messages with them, uh, with uh, the gentleman on the, uh, he'd be on the northwest corner. Mm -hmm. Well, really neat, no, uh -uh. it's his uh, nephew. I think is owns the property due so due south of him on the other side of Joe Neal, and so the two, you know, Joe Neal where it crosses Gainer, the two properties on each side of Joe Neal where it crosses, we don't have either one, and they are rel related somehow, uncle, cousin. Yeah, we had it one time and one of them backed out. Mm -hmm. both the whole time. No, we've never had either never one had. tell us that they were going to sign ever. All right. I'm going to make a motion to me. I'm going to make a motion to I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome back. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. <laughs> Got a few things to go through. I will try to make it fairly quick. Yep. So, uh, first one is uh, our rock bids are advertised, I think, today. Let's see. No, I think actually it's, yesterday. So, on the, yeah, the 24th and the 31st of the Okay, that was yesterday, right? Uh, two, days. two days ago. Okay, good. Did you need a motion or? I'm going to bring that up. We've already. Yeah, no, now, that was just the agreement for the uh, CIGP. Okay, yep. So uh, rocks are out for bid. The only thing that we have to do on our rock bids that I'm going to try to get Miss Karen to help me with is as part of our um, audit by OIG, they suggested that we work harder to demonstrate um, we're um, attracting or encouraging women, women and minority owned businesses to participate in our contracts. We're going to call some of the, them directly. Um, from the DOT's list and let them know that this is out for bid and then document that we've contacted them as part of our bid process, which is what FEMA recommends we do. Uh, we already have it in the advertisement that the county um, encourages women and minority owned businesses to participate. This will be just uh, further documentation so that if we have another audit, we can show that we've done that. Um, Let's see, King Cutter Road. Well, we looked into King Cutter Road. We had a discussion um, with Brenton, with uh, Wheeler. He's reviewed the bidding and contract documents. He suggested that we go ahead and award it and move forward with the project. Uh, I contacted uh, Mike Swarrington with GCUC. He uh, agreed to honor their price, even though it's over a year old. 
Uh, and so I would like to move forward with awarding the project so that we can get the contractor moving. Uh, you might remember King Cutter project is a low water crossing. Uh, we lost uh, part of a low water crossing in the storm event. And so this would be to um, put the uh, ribbon curve back in, put the base back in, and put the um, class two riprap on the banks uh, to complete the uh, low water crossing. I think FEMA's already paid you for it. Well, let me back up. I think it's part of a large project that you have not closed out yet is what I think correct. is correct, right? But it's about a half a million dollar project. This portion of the project is about $100,000. And so I've got the bids. If you want me to read the bids, for you to award it, but uh, the low bid was GCUC at $78,859.10. And then there was two alternates that we'd also like to award. Uh, one alternate for uh, additional ribbon curve for 4,000 and one alternate for uh, class two riprap, uh, 300 tons of class two riprap for 24,000. The total award amount would be $106,859.10. Accounted for at closeout is my this was my discussion with Britain. Yes. So Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, just Greenhead Road, just for one second, uh, with uh, Miss Bonita's discussion this morning. I'll just tell you guys that um, I gave her copies of the alignment and copies of the survey. And then I think the question about the matrix being redone was the, the county actually did redo the matrix. We got new scores from school board, from everybody else, and the matrix scoring was redone. And I, I do have a copy of the old matrix. So I've got a copy of the new matrix. Be happy to provide it with that. Would you uh, make sure we all get a copy of both of them, please? I'd uh, be happy to. <coughs> the new matrix, I don't think other people participated in that. Um, I would love to say they did, but yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll revisit that if we put on the list for the next workshop. Yeah, and you know, that's a it's a planning tool is really what it is. Um, you know, uh, I think the idea is pretty sound. Um, if you guys want to revisit that one day and shred it and start over with a new game plan, we can always do that. It's you know, it is a good planning tool. You know, one thing that's nice about it is that, if, for example. Somebody said we want to organize that list based on this county's cost per mile to maintain our roads. I hit one button and organize the entire list of all your county roads based on cost per mile to maintain, which is kind of nice to have. I can set it up to uh, list it based on number of houses per mile, where you have the most houses per mile on every road listed. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, look at information to make decisions. And uh, if you guys want to revisit that at the workshop and let me run through it at the workshop and you guys want to change something or do something different, it won't be no problem. I personally would like to, like, see, the, the, well, I mean, I've got copies of the old one and I just, at looking at them, they're around the reason why I can't do Yeah. And things change. I mean, this, they do. Things <coughs> And then even like, um, we were talking about kid right? Get it come on. Sometimes when you apply for grants, it's a better fit. Of course, I'm talking to somebody that has taught me a lot that it's good. It, it, it fits for the grants, and some, some does not fit as well. So yeah. they're going to award this one, and this first one on your paper, road matrix, they're not going to fund, so why would you, why would you submit it? And it depends on the dollar value of the project. Also, if it's too high, unless you break it in the statements to where they'll accept it. Yep. The other things that change, and I brought this up in the workshop, is sometimes you have a 
two projects complete. And in that this particular instance, you've got both roads are paved now. And then you've got a quarter mile of dirt. And then it goes and picks up back the pavement. Mm -hmm. Now see, that's an obvious yeah. thing. It may not be on the roadway, but it's that's something that ought to be fixed. You know what I mean? Just because you've got little segments right. coming out to dry here and there. So. Right. The, uh, County Road 284 is a perfect example. Uh, DOT just finished building you guys a new bridge on County Road 284 at, uh, I think it's Fish Branch Creek, I think. Uh, we paved three miles about six or seven years ago as part of a grant we got from Water Management District to, from, from the intersection of 280 uh, north. We paved three miles, which was a 50-50 grant. Now you got about two miles left, which in the middle of it's got a brand new bridge just built from DOT. And you would be going from pavement to pavement on 284 the whole way by, by fixing that last two miles. I mean, that to me is a project that, you know, deserves looking at yeah. or consideration, especially since you just got a brand new million and a half dollar bridge put in right there. So, but I mean, that's an example of how things change over time that can't really be accounted for on a list. It's very good. So, um, so um, anyways, uh, I'll be happy to give you you know, whatever copies I've got of the Matrix stuff, I'll be happy to give that to, uh, I've already given it to Tom. I gave Tom a list of basically all the ones that were ever done. I'd be happy to give it to Mr. Hank to give to you guys. And then if you want to talk about it at our workshop, at the, at the February workshop, I can put it on the screen right here and kind of walk through it and we can discuss it however long you guys want to. I, I think we just all need to look at it on our own and then just ask our questions and not yeah. do the whole thing. Okay. But you know, maybe a, a walk through in five, ten minutes would would get uh, you know Commissioner Hawkins. That's not gonna happen. No, okay. Happen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thirty minutes. I, I will. I will make it as long or short as you guys would like. How about that? Just come. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Commissioner Joyner mentioned we're meeting on the thirty-first with the Water Management District. We're going to look at uh, Strickland Road and Greenhead Road, both. And uh, maybe see what we can do to try to scrounge up some funding from them to help us on something. Um, their funding's tight, like everybody's, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Those, with those springs and, and people coming to them and things like that, they've got a little bit right? Yep. So uh, the next thing I've got is Kirkland Road. Uh, uh, DOT has pretty much set the fees for design and CEI both as part of your agreement that you guys have already awarded. And so we would propose to do the uh, survey design and CEI um, to prepare a set of construction plans that would uh, get reviewed and approved by DOT that could be put out for bid for the amount that they have listed on your agreement, uh, $17,865. And so I have a proposal here today, and if you guys choose to um, uh, get us moving on it, I'll be happy to um, uh, give it to the chairman to sign and we'll try to get our survey crews lined up, maybe hit it next week. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, not from lack of effort. With, uh, We've tried every which way we could. Yeah. And then it's on the name. Yeah. So uh, the last thing on my list is uh, our uh, scrap, scop, and sig p roads. Um, I talked with Tom uh, about uh, the roads that Public Works has listed as priorities. Um, I've looked at our uh, the matrix the way it stands right now, and I've also got some some roads that I've thought about that would be good candidates as well. We need to turn them in, I think, the second week of March. Uh, what I would like to have is uh, maybe a two-year workshop in February to ride some of these roads that the county is saying that they would like to have something done with so I can look and see what I think would score the best because we're competing against everybody else. Um, you know, the uh, Greenhead Road certainly is one of them that you guys have a big interest in that I think would um, eliminate uh, a pile of um, maintenance costs. Uh, the River Road is one that I think uh, would be a good project to consider. 
as well. What would your limits be on the river? From the end of the pavement to Pate Pond Road. So it would that would uh, cover the last segment. Just from the bridge on the bridge. Well, it's dirt before you get well, to the bridge too. Dirt. Yeah, there's a pretty long section. When you get to the end of what we paved um, with our water management district grant, mm -hmm. there's a pretty good distance from there to the beginning of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, we go from the other end of the bridge all the way up. <coughs> I think it's still called Pate Pond when you go across the intersection headed towards I-10, isn't it? Yeah. So it'd pull you out just south of I-10. Another road I want y'all to look at too. It's not in my district. I don't know anybody who lives on it, but it has been issue ever since I can remember. I've been coming up here since I was 13 years old, but Chance Road it is always a competition. Yes, sir. Uh, just real quickly, um, we'll have to decide then at the next workshop because Chance Road is scheduled to be milled this year. Cool. Good. That part. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, we don't mean to get in the way. No, it's like, 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 but the top three that were on the list, I think we finally got under control, you know, which was Roach, Buckhorn, and Lucas Lake. I mean, all three of those are pretty much committed or done. And then after that was, uh, I think, Gilbert's Mill, Crystal Lake, Ledger, Clayton, and Fire Tower. So, I mean, at least the, the list, I mean, a lot of the big projects on the list are being addressed. Buckhorn will be a huge project to get done and gone that will save you guys a pile of money on maintenance, too. Maybe we want to get green here that way we want to. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I was kind of the feeling I'm getting. Yeah. It holds value. Sometimes when I finish that out, I'm going to do the same Yep. Like I said, everybody has their priority. Make 30 seconds of the road matrix. Yeah. All right. I can get back up and speak again if you want. Yeah, I'm taking two miles, but I haven't measured it in a long time. I'd like to take a look at it and see. not a great idea to get the community kind of stirred up until at least you have a survey and an alignment to meet with them on. I mean, we could have a community meeting if you wanted to, but it would be better if we had some idea of what we're going to build before we do that. Do that like we did Greenhead and still Yeah. Well, now, DOT will let you, if it's scheduled, if it's already funded, and it's on their schedule, they will let you, um, you know, usually with an agreement, if you request an agreement, they'll let you do survey, design, permitting, all that stuff in advance, and then pay you back when it comes up on their schedule. Maybe that's an idea you want to try to do on Kent what, Road because... Can you give us an estimate of what, it, what that would cost in our next workshop? Can... Yeah, I can. I can, in fact... Same thing we did on Roach and uh, Luke's Lake and, you know, all in water, the gator, the right. water. I mean, all this effort, yeah, get, get property owners. right? Yeah, well, I think DOT's already set all the fees on the job, so it's not a matter of trying to negotiate fees, it's just a matter of whether or not they would uh, be good with paying you guys back when it comes up on their schedule. Isn't that, that not coming up? What was the date on us? 2018? Yeah, I don't remember that one. It was 17, right? I think it was 18, which would mean it would come out in July of this year. You would, if it was, if it was fiscal, their fiscal year 18, then July of this year you would get your agreement. It was just, it was just approved on right, this last time. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not sure. 
because I'm tired of you know, caring how it works so hard in the last minute. Yep. It took us six months on a uh, road trade, and we worked on it pretty hard. We worked six months on Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's something that the board can always consider advance, advancing a uh, project that way. I mean, it's not like something you bring it to us. It's really that. By the time it all gets done, it's all going to be able to get it actually get some work in July. So, we're not that far from the back of reimbursement. Right. Do you want to see if uh, maybe Mr. Hank can get with um, uh, Mr. Uh, Philip at DOT? Yeah. About the uh, advance um, funding agreement? Because yeah. that's something that can be done pretty easily. Uh, and that's all I had on my list, Mr. Chairman, unless there's anything you guys have questions on. Y'all good? Anybody good? Yeah. Yeah, don't Okay. All right. We'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hanks, gentlemen. Uh -oh. Mr. Chairman, I forgot one extremely important item. Um, a year and a half ago, we got a grant for uh, the town of Wausau for somewhere right around two hundred thousand dollars to put in some booster pumps. And one of the booster pumps that we are actually under construction on right now on Mud Hill Road. Uh, will push water to your public works yard where you have no water right now. And so our contractor was getting ready to dig footers and they went to uh, pull an electrical permit which triggered the review process through planning. And so the planning department has advised us that there's a 30 foot front setback required on any structure. Well, our structure is a pump house that goes over, it's just a, a little, basically a, a, a shed that goes over the top of these pumps. The planning department has advised that there's a 30 foot front setback and our whole easement for the entire project is 20 by 30. And so there's no possible way we can even build our project with a 30 foot front setback. I talked to Victoria, she told me I would have to get approval from the board in order to build to put a pump house on top of our pumps to build my project. And so it would be awesome if there's any way you guys could approve uh, a variance for me to not have a front 30 foot setback on the cover for my pumps. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, it would really help me tremendously. Like <coughs> okay, I just I just want to add there's a few other items associated with this. I just need to make sure we get on the record. Um, the other item is that it, this is for the town of Wausau, so they are requesting that the fees, there are normally fees associated with this, $20 for the land use certificate, $50 for variance, so we're requesting that, along with Cliff's request, that that is approved as well. I'll make money for all fees to be money for the city of Wausau, for town of Wausau. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, Hank. All right. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning, gentlemen. Uh, first up is the uh, West Florida Regional Planning Conference, uh, our council liaison. I'd like a, uh, uh, a name to submit to the West Florida Council, please, gentlemen. I thought we, we uh, named Charles Kent last week. I can't do it. Conflicts with the Trey Hawkins will be the next name. Al Alan Bush was a very good choice, but I think he, he is all about planning. I already got three of them. He's probably one of the most organized people I know. It's between y'all two that have the least down here. <laughs> oh, mine's out of town. Mine too. So, I'll find it. I can tell you one that's not going to be on it. <laughs> if that's what y'all mean, man. <laughs> I submitted two names. You want me to give you some more? Trey, can you do it? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a boy. No, no, I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Trey. Anytime. What's next? <laughs> that so, was easy. Yeah, that was easy, right? So uh, this one's easy too. The rest of them are easy. The uh, courthouse landscaping. Let's go ahead and approve the motion. <laughs> yeah, we need a motion. 
Yeah, you would have to bring that up. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion with Pat Trey Hawkins on this um, WFRPC liaison. I'll second. Aye. Aye. Courthouse landscaping is uh, ARC, which is our neighbors to uh, to us here at Danex. They came in at $10,800. Uh, Lawnscapes, who is the contractor who put the uh, original landscaping down at the courthouse, came in at $14,997.60. Uh, they do a little different setup for lawnscapings where they they do their, they frequent your uh, courthouse a little, little more in the growing season and then October through April they only, they drop down to two services per month. So uh, those are the two quotes that we have. You gentlemen are more than welcome to uh, accept one of those, not accept one of those, or have me reach out. And are the uh, are those? I mean, so that they were comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Did we did we list it out what we wanted, or did they just? That's correct. Scope of work was provided for and, both of them. And I mean, was there amount of amount of chemical involved in this, or? Yes, that each contractor went out and and looked at what amount of contract or chemicals and pesticides things like that would be applied to that the did they did they supply those amounts uh they supplied a uh i think so let me look here uh one of them is at market value then uh so the pine straws market value fertilizer is 66 dollars a bag uh flower bed borders 400 foot edges 400 dollars market value for annuals uh So we're buying plants on top of this is this just then putting them in uh is there a certain amount that they will replace no they the plants would be replaced as they died or whatever the annuals are this is just the upkeep all we got that's this correct this is just to do the monthly maintenance that's correct and then we no, well no the scope of work included uh well, the scope of work was, if you recall, I, I, I sent it out for um, consideration for the commissioners, but it's the weekly, the mud grass, edge the sidewalks, move trash, blow the sidewalks, and ensure the watering schedule. Uh, Bi-weekly, they'll pull weeds. Uh, monthly, they'll reapply, freshen up pine straw, apply the herbicide, and trim hedges. Semi-annually, they'll apply weed control to sidewalks and edge of buildings, uh, and as required, replace annuals and tree trim. Is the scope of work. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we go with the art center. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. And Alan said yes for a little. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then um, the next is the elevator phone monitoring. Uh, we call it Oracle and Mariana. They're just a, there's a couple things you need to take into consideration here. Uh, Oracle does not, they're only a um, dispatch office. They're not a monitoring service because they have to have servicing technicians available to come up and fix the phone if they have, if they monitor the phone. And they don't do it in our region. They work all down south. Uh, so they, they're out, of, they're out, they're not gonna do it. So your options are uh, Maori and Alert Line. Maori does have a maintenance, a telephone maintenance se a section in their contract where they will come out and fix the telephone as well. Uh, they have to replace this extra $245. Uh, it's a $1,200 a year charge. It's a five year contract that increases 3% per year um, for the life of the contract. Um, Alert line is $45 flat rate per month for about 500, and I think it's 530 a year. And uh, they only will dispatch, uh, they'll only monitor the phones and then they'll dispatch a phone, whoever we designate as the phone maintenance company, they'll dispatch that company to come fix the phones, but they don't fix the phones. We themselves. can't get the sheriff's department to do that. Is that not? <coughs> no. I mean, they're right there. Oh, for uh, to, to monitor answer, the phones. To monitor the phones. Uh, I'm not. Hmm. They don't come under nine one one. Well, I'm not sure. It's, that's that's a, a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. I'll I'll, I'll have to think about that. We should ask about two days ago. <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. Mm. I was prepared to go with this alert line, but now with the new information, <laughs> I, I mean, I, 
Yeah. If you, I mean, if you yeah. just got to have you someone have there 24 available hours. 24 hours a day, seven yeah, days a week. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good comment. You sure you have to do? We have the staff there, don't we? And I can say in the past, in the old courthouse, this has been years ago. I got stuck in one. Thing. I didn't have a whole lot of people on the phone. It was a man who was on the other end. Okay, I'll, I'll get back with you. That's been over ten years. So, so let me ask you this: uh, if they do it, that's that's the and Billy Brock, of the board. And Billy Brock can fix the phone. Well, you can always call a, a, a company to come fix a phone. That's not an issue. But. No, I, the monitoring, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, so if the sheriff's department is able to do that, somehow i got to figure out how we tie that line into the 911 system. But Well, the same, no, you just put a number in it. It's like you do anything. Yeah, right, yeah, have to yeah. sign it. So, because it hasn't got a number. I don't think it went to the 911. I think it went to like the regular. Yeah, well, you can probably the sheriff's just, department. Yeah, just to the sheriff. Yeah. But the phone's answered by dispatch. Yeah, and you wouldn't want it to go to a 911 line, probably. No, it did. Of course, it could be a lot. I was stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm there, I wanted to go to somebody. You're going to take a can in there with a string that runs over to the. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll call them. And if they're able to do that, then that's the way That's the way we'll go. That's the direction of the board. Well, and, and let me give up. If I could make an alternative motion. First of all, I would like to go with, with the. Sheriff's Department, sure. if they can do it. If, if not, I don't have a problem making a motion. Just to keep this from not prolonging uh, any further, to make a motion to go with our alert line, but the first priority being our Sheriff's yes, Department, sir. if they'll agree and we can make all that work, uh, to go with the alert line communications LLC. We've got a motion. Second. Got a second all in favor. Uh, yes, sir. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you all, all pleased to do so. all my conversation with the Good. Sheriff. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, the Senior Community Service Employment Program is a uh, it's a program that's offered here in the community to help put the seniors of Washington County back to work. Uh, and currently, uh, we spoke with uh, the representative for the for the the council here or that they have the company, and they have two candidates that they would like to see Washington County put into their uh, system. Basically, the program is they take a, you have to be a senior, 55 years or older, and you have to have, uh, your net income has to be below a certain level, and so that they, the Department of Labor will actually pay for this individual to come work for you in hopes that uh, when their time is up that you hire them into the position that you kind of trained them and had them working in. So right now they have two candidates uh, for our consideration. Uh, the only thing the uh, board will have to do is fill out an application for uh, a request for uh, applicants and uh, the one person is a clerical type uh, position and the other person is a uh, maintenance type position. They currently work at Fall Waters uh, in the maintenance section and then um, Town of Walsall for the clerical position. So uh, if you would like and there's you can if you bring the people on, to, on board and they do work for you, um, uh, you don't like their quality of service, you just tell them, you just get with the representative and say, hey, these guys aren't working out, I'm sorry, and they have reassigned them to another location. No and, one and, and, and they explain about, they pay them for that, the, and what is the period of time? So up to one year, and if you haven't chosen, so the Department of Labor will pay the salary uh, and, their work, and their worker compensation. Um, and it's a, for a period of one year, and if you haven't hired them within one year, then they will reassign them, which is happening to Fallen Waters and to Town of Wall. So they're just not, phys, uh, they're just not. Free uh, labor for a year. It, it, oh, you're helping your seniors get back into the workforce, yes, sir. <laughs> I understand, but I, yeah. and also the same bread. You get free labor, that's correct. They're gonna be great ones. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you'd like, we'd like to at least, uh, Inter interview these applicants to see if they fit to our system. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The only, the only thing is, if they're not actually, I, I just want to throw out there, if they're not actually an employee of the county, just our legal obligations as far as if you was to put one in a vehicle, ask them to go check the mail, it, it, is that part of our policy that a non-employee would it actually be an employee? No. All right. You know, I just want to make sure that we're following our policy as far as exposing them to a drill motor right. if they get injured. No, we're all covered. The workman's comp's covered by that's correct. By um, labor. 
we did discuss. Oh, well, Marla's not here. But yeah, we I'm did just saying rules and regulations. Yeah, we I, just, we I don't want to get into the particulars. Yeah, I just yeah, want to make sure we're all. The only thing would be the vehicle movement, the working copy. All right, so thank you for that permission. Um, also, you guys will have, uh, each commissioner should have the emergency medical services grant uh, in, in your folders. Uh, Mr. Randy Truitt asked me to uh, seek permission for the council to, or the commission to, uh, it's a grant to apply for a new ambulance for the emergency uh, medical services. I'll make a motion we approve that. Thank Second. you. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Ursley Road sidewalk design project. Uh, just a board agrees to authorize the chairman and the clerk to sign a resolution to enter into a local a lap agreement with a DOT to design the sidewalk from Ursley Road. Uh, it's basically it's from Brickyard to First Street, uh, providing about 1,900 feet of uh, six foot. That's six what foot I brought up a year ago, mm -hmm. just for those that y'all don't know, is the city is going in there. They've got a grant to go in there into the city and there's about 1900 foot if we hook on to that it can come out to Brickyard Road and complete that project for those of y'all that work uh, what, yeah, right, what is right away right there? I'm sorry what's that? Pretty good. Uh, I'll make a motion we approve this. We got a motion? Second. You got a second? All in favor? Uh, and thank you that's all I have. We need to do traffic safety and put a good map together and show the sidewalk. And it's, it's an area that you can see there's a gap. Madam Clerk, do you have anything? I don't think. Mr. Attorney? No, sir. I need a motion. Salute. Mm -hmm. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 